All right, what is up, my brothers? We're live for another episode of Playing to Win. Joined again by an old friend, Amir Rosick. What's up, brother? I'm doing good, bro. How you doing? Yeah, man. So we haven't talked in a while. You're, I mean, you've been a frequent guest over the years, and we always have great talks. So I wanted to pull you in to talk about some of the deeper. I don't even want to use the word darker, but like the deeper holes of the blockchain and cryptocurrency and decentralized finance and why DeFi is potentially going to be something you need to keep your eye on or even get involved in now. Um, what, wh what is decentralized finance um, in your view versus like, how does it differ from Bitcoin? Let's start with that. Um, it's, it's same, same, different, different. So Bitcoin is decentralized finance at its purest. So people forget that Bitcoin is the truest form of decentralized finance. I've always said it, the word, so DeFi stands for decentralized finance, and it's a misnomer. Uh, a better terminology, at least for the Ethereum space, is permissionless finance. So anybody, anybody, anywhere, anywhere in the world can build on top of these protocols and participate without anybody telling them they can or cannot. There's very few protocols within the Ethereum space, Uniswap being one, that it is fully decentralized and permissionless, meaning uh, no one can alter the set protocol. Um, so I don't want to go like crazy, crazy down into the technicalities, but yeah. to summarize, Bitcoin is still the king of DeFi. Okay. So Bitcoin still is decentralized finance, but it's, but it's more of a store of value. Like it's, like it's being used today as a store of, um, I, I buy Bitcoin it's kind of like digital gold. Month. That's it. End yeah. of story. And that's why it's an easier sell. So like you look at Ethereum right now with DeFi, that's today's flavor. Um, it's always been there. Like even if you look at like the white paper and the yellow paper and back like three, four years, people were talking about it. The DAO was a long time ago. DAOs existed. Mm -hmm. uh, just pro a product market fit and timing of the zeitgeist of if people are ready for this, both from a, a psychological perspective and from a market perspective and technology perspective, it wasn't there. But uh, Ethereum hasn't yet evolved to a point where I can sell a narrative. At the end of the day, it's not technology that matters, it's narrative that matters. Like I always tell people, like hypothetically, let's say a better Bitcoin comes around and hypothetically it's launched exactly the same way and hypothetically there's no founder, yada, yada, yada. Uh, the fact that narratives trump technology, memes trump technology, it's all about mimesis. And so Bitcoin has come to a point that the zeitgeist is a store of value. It's digital gold. It's a very easy sell when you tell people it's a better form of gold. As All opposed right, to so Ethereum, I, I, for me, it's like hard to, um, it's hard for me to narrow down exactly that one narrative of what Ethereum is at the moment. Well, Ethereum is still sitting in the number two place as far as popularity. I mean, we've got Bitcoin almost at a trillion dollar market cap, which is something that's going to be a huge milestone. I think they say when it hits like oh, B B grand. Bitcoin has all the has all the dev share has it's it's all, all the intellectual capitals in Ethereum when it comes to like building stuff. Yeah. Yeah, there's 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 more noise on social platforms about that than anything else. But I'm starting to hear more people talk about alternative uh, cryptocurrencies and tokens, which um, have promised in the future as as their my understanding as I'm hearing the information is these sorts of platforms are designed to um, not not so much. Rip, I mean. Replacing banks ain't going to happen anytime in the very near future, but maybe displace them, you know, to some degree. Um, I, I like to say they're giving you alternative options that never existed before. Yeah. And we need that because banks suck. I mean, I had a conversation earlier this week with my bank. It took me like almost an hour, four idiots to get to a manager just to do something so simple and basic. I should have been able to do it online. And they were basically holding my money hostage. I ended up shutting down the account and telling me to tell, you know, basically telling them to pound sand. Um, that's what I really, really like about, about decentralized finance, cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, however it is you want to wrap it up. But what I wanted to do with this uh, show is to try to get some clarity because I see a lot of people tweeting out about different um, tokens and, and coins. So I was hoping maybe we could go down this list a little bit and get sure. and get your perception of what they are and what promise they hold for the future. Sure. Does that work? Okay. So yeah. It, okay. So if you can define Ethereum to the viewers right now, what is that and why is it important? 
So for me, it's like I said before, it's hard to define it exactly how Bitcoin is. Like Bitcoin as it stands today for the last couple of years is a store of value. That's it. Like people aren't building anything on top of it per se. Well, they are trying to, but it hasn't taken hold. For me, I think Ethereum, people are trying to paint it as uh, it's, it's everything type of thing when it's everything it's nothing type of deal right yeah. so it's very hard to sell a narrative when it's everything but I've, for me i would, I would i've say actually it's heard the people biggest... say that it's like the oil and gas of the internet economy is that what it is yeah but that narrative they call is it digital horrible, oil horrible narrative okay that's why? like a really bad narrative to sell you know people like the, the reason why store of value works there's two functions to that right so number one people automatically know what a store of value means and when you say digital Digital gold, right? You're building off of a heuristic of understanding the value of gold. Mm -hmm. So your actual processing bandwidth to understand the value proposition of what Bitcoin is takes a split second. As opposed to saying, well, Ethereum is the oil. Well, it's beyond oil. Ethereum is also collateral asset on DeFi. There's billions of dollars locked. You need ETH as well for, uh, for gas, so that's the oil. You mm -hmm. also need ETH for other computational aspects. So it's like a trifecta. You have all these different types of properties that ETH represents. For me, at least today, uh, ETH is the biggest playground for experimentations and developers and new economic protocols being developed in the Web3 space. Got it. Okay, so let's keep going down the list. So we've got Tether. That's a bullshit coin. Don't use that. It's really just a stable coin. It's uh, a stable coin. <clears throat> uh, Binance coin. So BNB is interesting because... Um, I had to pick some Isn't up, it? I don't know, like six yeah. or seven months ago just to do some staking and a few other side things I'm doing on uh, Binance. And I got it at like 30 bucks. It's $197 today. What the hell's going on with um, Binance Coin in your view? Binance Coin is uh, a very old school type of model. It's an exchange coin that mm -hmm. became very popular in 2017. So the, it's a utility token for the most part. You use it for reduced fees on Binance. You can use it for staking to earn some type of fees. Uh, but for the most part, it acts similar to as a dividend because instead of it acts like a dividend, I say, but it's not the same flow as a dividend. A dividend, they'll actually give you payouts. Mm -hmm. So in Binance's case, they don't give you payouts per se, but they burn the supply of the token. Okay. Um, so so the way that I'm using it kind of like is an elementary, you know, description from my experiences. Um, if you want to stake on projects or earn tokens, if you want to earn at a stable interest rate, um, that's that's basically what you have to use on um, sure, Binance. Sure, but a caveat, you don't own your keys on Binance. So right. that's the one thing. You, yeah, so when you, you say owning your keys, you mean like you want them on cold storage like you would store your Bitcoin, but I mean, you're not going to do that with Binance coin because it's more correct. of like a utility. Also, also, depending on the amount you want to withdraw, I think it's two BTC but uh, you can correct me if I'm wrong. Too, you will yeah. have to do you have to do KYC and AML. Yeah, um, which is just a couple of hoops you got to jump through to get your Bitcoin out if you're moving more than two at a time. Um, Cardano, what's the story with that? That one I heard a lot about over the last couple of years. Not so much lately. It's, it's, it's still a ghost in the top chain, five, man. It's a ghost chain. Nothing. It's garbage. Nothing. Like nothing's going on, and there's been there for years. Like there's no. I don't know what the fuck they're doing. Well, it's sitting at number five on this list here. So, I mean, there's 28, what I, is it, billion? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make everyone a, a, a proclamation here. I'll put $20,000 down in the next three years, even sooner. In the next two years, you're going to see a complete reorg of those top tens. Okay. Well, yeah, absolutely. I mean, 100% in the next 10 years. You're going to see this change dramatically. No, 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 not 10 years, in two years. Oh, in two years. Okay. Yeah. All right. Polkadot, what do you think of Polkadot? And, Very cool. Very and what cool. is the so story behind Polkadot? Because I've got some of this. Yeah, so one of the co-founders of Ethereum wanted to create a different architectural design. Uh, Polkadot looks like what Ethereum 2.0 will be. Mm -hmm. So it's almost the same architectural design as what Ethereum 2.0 is trying to do. Is it used uh, very, Like, Is it based on like an Ethereum blockchain or is it on its own? It, no, no, they created yeah. their own from scratch, okay. right? So DOT is the currency. It functions very differently than how Ethereum functions, but where Ethereum is wanting to head to, like the Ethereum 2.0, DOT kind of behaves the same similar architectural design. A lot of developers are working on DOT. It's fairly new, uh, so mm -hmm. the Lindy effect isn't there. The, the, the narrative isn't there. There's no narrative around it. But when you, when you look at, like, developer focus, where you look at interesting technologies, where you look at also, like, synergies between other blockchains, mm -hmm. DOT has a lot of synergies with Ethereum. 
And what problem does Dot solve? Scalability. Okay, which you don't get with Ethereum is what you're saying? Not right now, as anyway. of today, not yeah. as of today. You do with like layer twos, that's a whole different conversation, but uh, not, not as, a, as a layer one right now. Right. And, and and by the way, guys, like all of these that we're talking about right now, like you shouldn't even be looking at these unless you've bought some Bitcoin. I mean, you should probably aim for at least one Bitcoin first before you even start playing with any of this stuff. Um, totally. Bitcoin is like is like just bridging the gap between uh, early adopters and then mass adoption. Like all of these companies like Michael Saylor and Tesla buying up loads of Bitcoin. This is just the start of a wave of money that start that's going to pile into Bitcoin. This stuff isn't isn't anywhere close bridging the gap between early adopters and mass adoptions. It's not even close to it. So there's lots of upside to all of these things, but not all of these things will blow up at the end of the day. Most of this will just kind of like blow up and fizzle out, if you know what I'm saying. Um, should we even bother with XRP? Because that's just bullshit. Pass. <laughs> Pass. Okay. XRP is really just a token that the banks use to move money around. It's it's they centralized. They don't even use it, man. I don't yeah, know who the it, fuck uses it. Yeah, it's a centralized token. I mean, it's basically a lawyer magnet. They ended up, I think, answering a, a class action lawsuit over some bullshit last year. But stay with SEC. SEC is actually suing them and going after the founders. So it's interesting because yeah. uh, stay they, they away from anything that's centralized, yeah. basically, which yeah. is which is XRP. Um, Litecoin. I mean, that's just kind of Bitcoin light. I mean, there's really not much to talk about there. Well, they say there. Litecoin is more as a test net for Bitcoin. So instead of trying to figure out stuff on Bitcoin, since it is pretty much the same thing, uh, Bitcoin. Yeah. They, so they do test net on there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you'll always be, be better off holding like $20 worth of Satoshis on Bitcoin than, than $20 worth of Litecoin. Um, it's just the reality of it, but. I mean, if you want to grab some, um, let's move on to another. So Chainlink is a DeFi token. So I wouldn't classify it as uh, DeFi per se. What Chainlink is, it's an Oracle protocol. It's middleware. If you look, if you prefer talking software. So Chainlink links is the number one connector of Oracle feed prices. So without Oracle feed prices, the whole ecosystem kind of crashes. So if I need to take multiple different prices from different exchanges, from different DEXs, if I need to take off-chain pricing from different, like you know, in the real world pricing onto the onto Web three, that's what that's what Chainlink does. It's very important, really, really important. Uh, people don't talk too much about oracles, but without Oracle, without price arbitrage, without figuring out the stability of the price, the whole system kind of collapses. Is this is this one that's worth holding? Chainlink has, bro. I think from last from the last two years has gone up like I don't know, like seven on on unreal amounts. Okay, I'm going to drop that down. Uh, Bitcoin Cash, I want to skip over because that's just another bullshit coin. Um, do you want to talk about Stellar or? I don't know what on earth they're doing. Okay, we'll skip that. USD coin is a stable coin. Stable coin. Okay, what about Do Dogecoin or Dogecoin? Everybody's jerking off to this Bro, one the last couple of this weeks. This is the original. This is the original meme coin. Yeah, like people understand. The Dogecoin is old. Uh, Jackson Paul, Jackson Paul, I think was his name when he made it. Keys are burnt. Nobody runs it. There's hardly any GitHub repos on it. Meaning people aren't developing. It was it was literally designed as a fucking joke. Yeah, but like there was no like in, intention to come in and be like, oh, we're gonna create. No, it's like I'm gonna make fun of this and we're gonna do Dogecoin and it's created a life of its own. Like believe it or not, like there you. Ugh, just even as of two years ago, there used to be Dogecoin conferences in Vancouver. Like the the culture behind Dogecoin is massive. Like it's people really don't understand the power of the meme of Dogecoin. Like if you're not if you don't understand memes, if you don't understand like how memes uh, shape ideologies, which shape reality, then you really don't understand a the world how it works and b specifically how the crypto world works. So basically, it's a joke. I mean, if you want to play the joke, then get it. If you if you're smarter, then stay away from it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's always somebody out there that's new that's like, get some Dogecoin, get some, you know, it's it's gonna go. No, dude, it's like you know, there's always somebody that's like, you know, ever heard of Doge Dogecoin? It's like, just just don't. Um, what about wrapped Bitcoin? Like, I don't even know what that is. How would you? How would you okay, summarize? Okay, so that? you you got you got Bitcoin on its own blockchain, right? You got Ethereum its own blockchain, and you can't natively take the Bitcoin asset and put it on on Ethereum, not as of yet. Okay. So basically, what they do is you have a service. This is not this is not decentralized. This is custodial. So 
you have a bunch of different services that will hold your Bitcoin. So basically how it works is you have a service that, will, that you send your physical Bitcoin into. Uh, one service is WBTC.cafe. And so basically how it does is like, let's say I send one Bitcoin to the service. This one service gives me an ERC20 Ethereum token that represents my Bitcoin. It's mine. I control 100%. Now I have a wrap Bitcoin on Ethereum and I can do all sorts of different things. I can use it as collateral. I can stake it. I can earn interest rates on it. I can participate in different DeFi protocols. Actually, one of the biggest DeFi protocols right now on Ethereum is Badger, which just focuses on Bitcoin and they have about uh, like 2.5 billion AUM right now. So, I mean, if I'm understanding this correctly, does this... Does this wrap Bitcoin pull Bitcoin into smart contract Ethereum. networks? Yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Is yeah, that yeah, something yeah. worth holding, or is it just something that What's you get it? as you need it? If you're, if you're, if you want to geek into DeFi and really go down the fucking rabbit hole, mm -hmm. you can experiment. I want to say do a whole Bitcoin, do whatever you know, five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks to mm -hmm. at least understand it. But like, if you really want to benefit from the upside of the different farms that they have, the yield, uh, the interest rates on DeFi, then definitely I would recommend at least experimenting with the, with wrap Bitcoin. All right. Uniswap is where you're paying gas fees, right? Like this is where you're swapping out Ethereum for other You're paying companies. gas you're paying gas fees for any single transaction done. Okay. Regardless so is, of if it's a swap or not. Okay. So is Uniswap something that you want to hold or is it just something yeah. that you're paying gas fees? You know Uniswap Uniswap has done more volume than Coinbase and Kraken. It is when right? I said DeFi, oh yeah, they're massive, man. $100 billion the other day volume. Huh. Um, but I mean, like, are these gas fees getting so expensive that it's that it's pushing people to other solutions? Correct. And we already have solutions right now, like Layer 2, which we can dive into, which Uniswap is going on Layer 2 in the next couple of months. And, and pretty much all of Ethereum will be Layer 2 within the next three months. Which okay, your so gas you're fees saying it's not going anywhere then? Pe pennies on the dollar, literally. Okay. Ave is one that I've heard mentioned a few times. A lot of people have said, I love it. get this one love and it. hold it. So what is it and what problem does it solve? Like, why do you love this so much? Ave is an open source permissionless money market. So I can take all different forms of collateral, uh, different types of tokens like WBTC being one. Mm -hmm. I can go to Ave and stake it, earn some interest and use that as collateral to take out stable coins, which is great because I don't know about you, but I, I don't really sell my crypto. I'm like super long. I'm like 20, 30 years long. So I never, right. ever want to sell my crypto. Mm -hmm. So basically what I do is that you can go and have it. You can then stake your crypto as collateral. And they have different types of ratios to make sure you're not liquidated. So obviously like no, no different than any other type of money market. You want to make sure your collateral is healthy um, in comparison to the loan that you take. The loans are very cheap in comparison to DeFi. You're talking about anywhere between lows of 5% to the highs of 8%. And now you can take that loan. For example, here's a here's something you do in DeFi. You take your Ethereum, you take your WBTC, or there's a bunch of collaterals you can check on Aave. Mm -hmm. You collateralize it, earn a little bit of interest on that. You take a stable coin loan. I can take that loan and go to some DeFi pools and I can be earning 30% interest rates by just staking on, on their protocol. So is so is Aave an exchange or is it a decentralized token? No, it's, it's a money market. Okay, and it's a decentralized money market. It's a decentralized permissionless money market, yeah. Interesting. Okay, I'll have to do a little more research, but and I do like that when like, I get the reasons for it now. Ave might be getting into mortgages, man. Like if Ave does mortgages, I will never use a bank in my life ever again. Period. Yeah. Point blank. I and mean, I'll do I'll do just about anything to try to avoid using <laughs> banks today. <laughs> Fuck those guys. <laughs> Fuck those guys. Um Cosmos, do you have any thoughts on that? I love it. Uh you know, half Why? the teams from Toronto. Um the one, the architecture, how they designed it, the simplicity behind it, uh, the value prop that they're solving is quite different than what even Ethereum 2.0 will be. So like my, my thesis in the future is no different than software. You're going to have protocols that specializes in verticals. Ethereum might be DeFi. I don't know. Bitcoin is a store of value. That's it, at least as of today. Uh, Cosmos might be something completely different. So depending on your use case of what you're trying to build in the crypto world will determine which type of protocols you would like to use. And so if we're looking at network effects and like Moore's law, and we're looking at developer mindset and intellectual capital, the only three that you should be focusing on in order, uh, Bitcoin's by itself, because it's like I said, it's, it's slow, steady, blah, blah, blah. Ethereum number one, then we got DOT, then we got Cosmos. The rest is, it's a, it's a nothing burger. Okay. 
Um, Monero, aside from maybe buying like depleted uh, uranium on the black market, uh, what do you think of that? I think, I think, believe it or not, my, my thesis is I think Monero is undervalued and uh, I think the price will keep on going up and up uh, once other types of protocols are built around it to do easier swapping. The biggest problem is swapping right now. And uh, I think more depend uh, specifically what we're seeing right now in the current times, I think more people will have to come to the realization that privacy is fucking important because I think a lot of people don't realize how important privacy is. Yeah, I, I haven't seen like the mass adoption that I was expecting with Monero when they yeah, really started uh, until pumping they it get a few it, years until ago. They, until they get a boot up their fucking ass and they realize how important it is. Okay, so you like that one then. Um, EOS, what is that? And is that important? That, it's it, it's a nothing burger. Nothing burger, okay. Bitcoin SV, that's also nothing? Nothing burger. Okay. Uh, Tron, TRX. It's, it's a curled copy of Ethereum in Asia. So that's a nothing burger? In my mind, yeah. Okay. NEM, XEM? I have no idea what they're doing. It's a nothing burger in my mind. IOTA? Oh, my God. I didn't even get started with that one. Okay. So this is why I like you, man. You you know, you're short, right to the point. No fucking around. Let's get right to it, Rich. V-Chain? Nothing burger. Tezos? They're, the one thing with Tezos is what they're trying to do and I just think is way too early. They're trying to capitalize on uh, security tokens. But I think it's just way too early. Regulation's not there. Like there's way too many moving pieces. I think we're years and years away from something that's robust as like the TSX, that's all security tokens. Okay. Theta. They're trying to do some Amazon thing with videos. I don't know, nothing to me. Okay. Avalanche, A V A S. The new the new Ethereum killer. For me, right now, it just came out. To me, it's a nothing burger as of today. So it's so it's slated to be an Ethereum killer, but you're saying it's got nothing going on for it. They literally just came yesterday, so I have no idea. Okay. So I'll put a question mark for that one to keep an eye on it. Huboy token, HT. Wobi. Um it, it is similar to the Binance token, same properties. Okay. Neo. The Chinese Ethereum killer, the nothing burger. Okay. Terra. Ah, this one's interesting. So this one's Korean DeFi. So okay. for people aren't familiar, Korea is probably one of the most uh, per capita uh, active crypto traders on the planet, point mm -hmm. blank. And Terra is very focused on Korea. And if you don't understand Korean culture and the zeitgeist in Korea, they like their own shit versus other people's stuff. Mm -hmm. um, enter Terra. Okay. Dash. I have no idea what they've been doing. They've been around for a very long time. They've been trying to do stuff in Latin America. Mm -hmm. They try to do some payment stuff, but I don't know. I have no fucking idea. All right. Crypto.com coin. What is that? Like a Binance coin. No different. Got it. The graph GRT. Yes. So another another middleware. You so like this? middleware is really important in, in crypto space. Yeah, yeah. So the graph's really important for are also connecting all different protocols. I'm not going to dive into specifics, but no different than how Link needs to do price feeds. Graph is connecting different types of data sets all across different protocols that need to talk to each other. So it's re it has a huge Moore's Law network effect. Like, let me put you need to use some type of subgraph when you're building something. And mm -hmm. graph is the best one so far. Like, no matter what, this is this is where I look at it. I have to use an Oracle feed no matter what. And the best Oracle feeds are ones that have the network effect to have multiple Oracle feed connections. Meaning I can't rely on one Oracle feed. And we've seen time and time again in, in crypto, if you rely on one Oracle feed, you get flash loan attack, you get Oracle manipulation. You need to have different type of Oracle prices from different type of Oracle feeds to make sure your attack vector is as minimal as possible. No different than me creating data sets and subgraphs. I need to have as many different connected network effects. So the graph is, uh, I think it's, I like it, yeah. So it has a future. L L Ron. Oh, yeah. I have no idea what they're doing. Okay. SNX uh, synthetic. Oh, token. super bullish. Been years bullish on it. Think of an open source synthetics exchange running 24 seven, seven days a week that you can trade anything on it. And they just started, they just listed Tesla shares as a synthetic version of it. I can go on there. I can, I can, I can use a SNX token. I can mint a stable coin from it. 
earn exchange rewards for providing liquidity. Mm -hmm. And then I can take that stable coin and buy synthetic shares and, and synthetic versions of tokens to trade against. So this is linking decentralized finance to the stock market. Is that what you're saying? That's your long-term plan. Yeah. Interesting. All right. Well, it's a good thing I bought some of that. Maker, MKR. Uh, money market as well, like a bank money market. Yeah. Okay. Uh, FTX token, FTT? A exchange token. Okay. Al Algorand. Okay. Uh, Algorand. I don't know. So called another. The Anybody that claims to be a theorem killer, like, they're like, goodbye. Like, there's no killing Ethereum right now. They won the narrative as of like the so called layer one. Okay. Uh, Solana. Uh, they have some interesting stuff on it, uh, good teams on it, but uh, they're brand new, so it's yet to be determined on the future of what narrative they have. Thanks. Let me just hit uh, thank you for Alex for the super chat. Appreciate that. Um, Filecoin, F-I-L. I personally believe it's overvalued right now, but what they've been trying to do is data, uh, monetizing data, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, uh, Juan, which is the team lead on, on Filecoin, created IPFS. Um, and so basically what they're trying to figure out is like, if you have spare data, you can use your hard drive or terabytes or whatever you have to mm -hmm. host different types of files. You get paid for that. So it's kind of like decentralizing storage. Uh, I, my personal biased opinion, way too early. Still. I'm not, yeah, I'm not hearing a lot of excitement out of you on, on this one. No. Um, compound COM. COM. Another money market. Another money market. Okay, DAI, D-A-I. It's a decentralized stable coin. All right, Sushi Swap. I've heard uh, Mark Cuban Uni talk about Uni that one. Uniswap's competitor. I like them. You like them? I like them. I like the execution. I like the team. I like the goofy fucking experiments they do. I like everything about them. Is this is this one to buy and hold? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Zcash we got as a privacy yeah. corn. Uh, Kusama is one that I've heard a lot about too. What do you think of Kusama? That, that's Dot's testnet. So uh, people are bullish on that. But like, remember, like a lot of these ones you mentioned, like Dot or even uh, not Cosmos have been out for a while, but Dot and like Avalanche, mm -hmm. they've literally come out yesterday. Yeah. Uh, so we got Binance USD, which is just uh, another stable coin. Stable Ethereum, coin. Yeah, Ethereum Classic we can skip. What's uh, Decred? Decred is cr cool, man. They've been around forever, and they have one of the most interesting governance systems. So they have a proof of stake and a proof of work running linearly together. Mm -hmm. And they, they don't, people don't talk too much about them, but in reality, I really love the experiments they're running and how long they've been doing it. Mm -hmm. Um I don't know if it's one of the tokens I would personally hold on to for alpha per se, mm -hmm. but I don't discredit what they do. I actually applaud them. I wish them the best because what they're trying to achieve is no one's really trying to do what they're trying to do. Yearn <laughs> finance, YFI. Yearn is an interesting one. So that is also, uh, I, I can call it a DeFi aggregate where it aggregates all these different DeFi protocols to create different vaults and different opportunities and different alpha for people to do. What's interesting about it, it was uh, no founders per se, no fundraising. Uh, the guy Andre that created it just needed to create the token to do his own thing, then realize other people were mining it. They burnt, you know, there's only, uh, I think just under like 40,000 tokens, so very limited supply. Uh, I forget exactly because they just, they increased the limit just the last week, so I forget what the number is now, but Urine's a big one. I think that one's just going to keep. And also, side note, there's rumors where, uh, fuck, what their name is? Barry. What the hell's his name? Uh, what's those guys? they got the Bitcoin ETF. I'll come to me. Any, anyways. Um, you talking uh, about QBTC? Well, well, no, no, no. That's a Canadian one. That's uh, the 3 IQ. The other guy's in the United States. Um, oh, the Grayscale one? Grayscale. So Grayscale's actually, we, we there's paperwork that we saw in Delaware. They just opened up... Uh, uh, urine Wi-Fi trust so people can start buying. Well, that's rumors, but uh, I am super bullish on urine. Okay. Um, here's one that's interesting. Pancake swap cake. I've heard a lot about that's it. That's Binance's, that's Binance's straight clone of Uniswap. Is that something that uh, you want to buy and hold? Because I'm because I'm hearing people say buy, 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 but I don't, I don't know no. anything about it. Like what problem does it solve? I'm not bullish on it. No? If you're a trader, you would have made a killing off of it, but uh, I do zero trading. Yeah. Okay, UMA, UMA. 
interesting. So they're doing synthetics as well. Think of them as an, uh, in their own type of, let's say, they're trying to do synthetics differently than what, how Synthex is doing it. So I think more competition, more experiments with synthetics is needed. So I personally don't hold any, but I think what they're trying to accomplish is it's, it's needed. And so basically they're trying to do a different variation of what Synthex is doing. Um, I'm going to start skipping through some of these because I don't want to take don't up. Don't know, like not, nothing burger, nothing burger. Okay, talk uh, to me about Celsius. Celsius. The utility I mean, of the token. These guys Listen, are it's, it's claiming it's that they're basically going to be an online bank where you're going to earn interest. You can borrow against your crypto. It seems to have the most stable infrastructure right now from what I've seen. Anyway. Well, one, they're an exchange, right? So they hold, they hold your keys. Um, nothing against that. I'm just biased and I don't want anybody holding my keys and I'll take the risks of losing it all. I want to control everything and I, I'm not a big fan of people knowing who I am. Mm -hmm. So Celsius, cool, you know. Um, Do you think it's something that would, that would get adopted by the masses? You know, people that would overlook the fact that you don't own your keys, like that's not a big deal to them. They just want to earn the interest and borrow against their crypto. Maybe, uh, but Celsius, like for me, if that's the case, and the, the coin bases and the krakens will just suck up more people, globally mm -hmm. speaking. Okay. Um, you want to hit on any of these waves near protocol, BitTorrent, near, ZRX? near, uh, near, near is doing some cool scaling. Zero X has been around forever. I know the founders, they're kind of like the infrastructure glue of a lot of the DeFi protocols. The um, infrastructure glue. Expand yeah, on that a little yeah. bit. So you got like a lot of these DEXs, like we mentioned Uniswap and like there's ones like one inch, you have sushi swap. And so what ZeroX is trying to do is building like an aggregate network uh, of, of protocols where everything kind of feeds through ZeroX. So they've been around forever. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're, not a, they're not a new kid on the block. And so they're shipping code. I like the direction that they're taking lately. And, uh, you know, their token price, obviously, like everybody else, going like this. But the direction that they're taking, I'm super bullish on. And I like the I like I like what they're focusing on right now. Okay. Um, I'm start. Oh, here we go. Here's one that's interesting. I've I've heard you tweet about this one a lot. Room. Oh, bro, so that's that, talk that to me about crazy. Room. All right, all right, because this ties into WBTC. Okay. So right now, yeah, you have. So that's Thor Chain. Yeah. Um, so let, let's go back to everybody's familiar with like Pareto's principle, like Ziff's law, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So in crypto right now, Pareto's principle is Ethereum and Bitcoin, liquidity and mental focus and intellectual capital. And then there's a the long tail for everything else. But the long tail adds up. There's fucking billions of dollars in the long tail, right? The crypto market's what? Two trillion now coming up or something? That's peanuts. It's going to be hundreds of trillions in the future. And so basically how it works for the protocols right now is you have some are proof of work, some are proof of stake, uh, multiple are going to be proof of stake but they're not interchangeable natively. So for example, if I want to take Bitcoin right now, I have to wrap it onto Ethereum. If I want to take Ethereum or if I want to take DOT, which is Polkadot or Cosmos, I have to wrap it and bring it on Ethereum, vice versa. If I want to put Ethereum on Cosmos, I have to wrap it and bring it to Cosmos. ThorChain so far, and it looks great, they're on testnet, they just launched testnet, that's not necessary. For the first time ever, non-custodial, you have your keys. You, you think of it as the glue, the, the decentralized exchange that connects all the blockchains together. So if I want to swap Bitcoin for Ethereum without wrapping, non-custodial, done. If I, don't, if I want to switch Ethereum for DOT, non-custodial, done. So is and this it, going to be built as an exchange or what are they yeah, building here? But it's more than just a DEX. So it's phase one, it's a DEX. So it, Thorchain is going to be a decentralized exchange with DeFi integrated into it. And mm -hmm. if if Testnet proves to be sustainable and it works, Thorchain is going to be top 10. Like I, I have no, without a shadow of a doubt. Hmm. Okay. Um, and then we're kind of getting to like the top 100 or so. Is there anything here that's notable that Loop. we should... Looprint's pretty cool. That's layer two exchange on Ethereum. They have over $100 million worth of volume and mm -hmm. cost you literally pennies to exchange. So if you want to exchange like stable coins to Ethereum or some DeFi tokens, like people talk about expensive, they just don't know about this. Like I use Loopring. Mm -hmm. You can literally do swaps for pennies right now on Loopring. Okay. 
Uh, what about Swiss Borg? I've I've heard that a few times. Uh, I don't know. No, one inch is pretty cool. So they're like an aggregation of different types of dexes. Mm -hmm. uh, think of them as another competitor to Uniswap. So everyone's trying to kind of figure out their their competitive advantage against Uniswap. I'm not seeing any other names here that I've like. I'm at this point basically looking for tokens and names that I've heard people talking about on a frequent basis, and I'm not seeing anything here. Is there anything that we missed in the top hundred? Uh, not really, to be honest. I don't see. Let's see. Uh. Not really, to be honest. All right, so let me just kind of kind of go over to summarize. And before I do that, there's there's a couple of super chats here I got to catch up on. Uh, Nick says thoughts on Tay Coin. I don't know if you know what that is. Never heard T of it. Okay, so it's a nothing burger. Um, the Mississippi Club says 150 likes and 500 watch, and talk about some bums in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> I like this guy, the Mississippi. Yeah, hit, yeah, <laughs> smash that like button, guys. Come on, you know, it, it doesn't cost you anything and it helps out with the algorithms, all right? Mexican Iron Man says, great information. Thank you, Rich. Uh, thank you, Amir. Um, and I don't know who this is, but he's talking about some guy named Richard Hart. Do, do, uh -huh. do you know a guy named Richard Hart in the crypto space? No, I never spoke to him, yeah. Richard Hart has been a serial entrepreneur for years, retired since 2000. He is heavily into crypto and based the first blockchain certificate of deposit. Yeah, Hex. It's uh, To me, it's a nothing burger. Okay, problem solved there. Um, okay, so let me kind of summarize what we got over here because what I really wanted to do with this is, is like kind of dive into decentralized finance and try to get a little more information on, on which tokens would be worth watching and maybe even buying and holding. So... Out of um, out of the ones that I highlighted here, I got Ave, Adam, Luna, Sushi, KSM, Uma, and Rune. What are your What are your top three that you think people should really look at or even consider holding? Well, there's also the theory that, except one on that chart, that uh, two, sorry, so that would be Luna and Thorchain. All the all the other ones are on Ethereum. So think of Ethereum as an ETF for all these DeFi. So, if we're going back to the original thing of Ethereum being oil, which I just don't like the narrative of oil, it's, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm an oddball, but I think the narrative for like price accumulation for oil is it's moot. Um, you just hold Ethereum. Um, and it's also going to be less volatile. Like that's another thing. Like DeFi is fairly new per se based on where we're heading. And, you know, it's going to take years of different experimentations and attack vectors and, and to battle test everything. And the DeFi tokens will also be the ones that experience the most volatility, like extreme volatility. Yeah. And so if you're accustomed to, like I've been in the space for eons, for me, like I don't give a shit per se. But if you haven't been accustomed to it and emotionally you're attached to your investments, then it's just better off to hold the underlining asset that represents that ecosystem. In this case, that would be ETH. Ethereum. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Um, all of these... Um tokens that we're talking about the DeFi tokens they've had a pretty big run up recently um, they're also very different than 2017 because these are actually value accrued they collect fees they pay out kind of like dividends per se these aren't like the, these literally act as like money market type of tokens mm. Qua, they're like qua, qua, people call it quasi equity but it's not per se equity it doesn't really pass the uh, like if you look at the standard uh, what do they call howey test you know, some of them maybe, but majority of them, they're very different. They're in like a whole different realm uh, of, of how you classify them. So I've written down Ave, Synthetic, Sushi, KSM, and Rune. Those are the top five that I'm going to keep an eye on. Is that a safe bet? I mean, yeah, but like also you, 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 can do, you can do classical portfolio leveraging or I would say betting where portfolio size. So you can you can you can do the spray and spray type of model where you might do you know different weights on different ones you might do yearly rotations mm -hmm. um, or if you have true convictions and your t plus preference is high you do very weighted um so you got to figure out what your type of risk to reward profile is what your t plus preference is per se um also if you're short term long term because if people are planning to cash out depending on where you are geographically uh, you want to hold it for X amount of time, so you pay long-term cap gains versus short-term cap gains. And if you're trading it, then that's income tax per se. Um, and so basically, I always say 
figure out how you're mentally wired, figure out what your T plus time preference is and what your conviction is, and then make uh, smaller but heavier vets. Um, somebody wanted me to ask you about the best platform for day trading. I know you more, more or less hold, but what do you think? I don't day trade per se. And like gas fees on Ethereum right now are crazy. Like people use centralized exchanges like FTX is really good. Check them out. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. I hope you guys got something out of this. Uh, looks like we're getting some good feedback here. Uh, one of the best playing win episodes of all time. Thank you so much learning about crypto. So guys, if you want to get started and you're not involved, you need to start with just simply acquiring whatever Bitcoin you can get. It doesn't have to be a full Bitcoin. You can buy 20 bucks worth of it. Um, in the description, I link to the easiest exchanges to get started, whether you're in Canada or the U.S., Go there. Listen there's, there. listen, there's simple stuff people can do now, depending on where you are. Like, there's places like, uh, uh, full disclosure, I'm an advisor for them. Uh, but there's a company in Canada uh, called Ledin, L E D N dot I O, where if yeah, you I use have that Bitcoin, actually. Yeah. Hey, man, they'll give you like six to 10%. It kind of fluctuates, but let's say in that range, they'll give you six to 10%. You put your Bitcoin in and you earn interest in Bitcoin. You don't earn interest in Canadian dollars. Yeah. If the United States uh, be block fo uh, blockified, so, you know, it's not just simply, I know there's a meme, what does Pet Rock do? <laughs> but there are services out there if you want to dox yourself, obviously you have to do KYC, AML, yada, yada, yada. But basically you can be earning 6 to 10% in Bitcoin per month by putting your Bitcoin there. Yeah, I use it. It's, it's real straightforward. And if you want to double your Bitcoin, they have a program where you can kind of like stake whatever you've put in there on deposit and they'll lend you... At a, at a reasonable interest rate so that you can double the amount of Bitcoin that you have within a short and period of time. That's so they've got some interesting programs. Also, people need to understand, especially in North America, so if you take your collateral, let's, let's say Bitcoin or ETH, and you uh, put it as collateral, whether it's on a centralized exchange like this or a money market, or whether it's on a DeFi money market, and you take a loan out, that's tax-free. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, Actually, before we go, I wanted to ask you on what your view is of the narrative that I, I mean, I first heard it from Michael Saylor, but he was talking about how he's looking at Bitcoin as digital real estate that you kind of want to just hold like it's a valuable piece of Manhattan property. And if you ever need money, you know, you can borrow against it. Like, do you think that I, um, I, we're I've seeing never, this I've transition never, that way? I've never sold a Bitcoin in my life. I've done yep. this for years. Yeah, I've 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 made the mistake of of selling it a couple of times, and it costs me more to buy the shit back that I sold. Exactly. Whatever. So basically, basically, you 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 lean against it like real estate. That's it. Yeah. So you can borrow against it. It's, it's the it's only caveat. The, the only this is a caveat. This is a caveat. Go ahead. Loan to value for real estate can go up to ninety percent, meaning I can take a shit ton of fucking cash right. out of my properties. Okay, and my properties aren't volatile going like this. You know what I mean? And so we have a lot of liquidation events. Last year was a big one in March. I think it dropped, I don't know, like 50%, yeah, 50%. It dropped 50%. So depending on your loan-to-value ratio uh, and depending on how fast you were, um, a lot of people got liquidated. Billions of dollars got liquidated because the loan-to-value ratio was low. And so it's not quite there yet. We're like, oh, uh, I can put a million dollars worth of Bitcoin and take huge amounts of equity from that cash, right? So loan-to-value ratio is low. It seems, right? Yeah, yeah. So because of volatile, like people think, okay, I'll give you this example. Like based on the logarithm and based on the same pattern and the Fibonacci sequence and Moore's law, Bitcoin should hypothetically run up to two hundred thousand dollars in this bull market. Hypothetically, Ethereum to ten. Hypothetically, could be complete nothing burgers. But if you're looking at previous charts and previous behavior per se, um, but then. You, expect a 50% drawback most likely. Then you have a new lower base, right? So if it's 200, the new low base is 100, right? That's kind of like the support base per se. And so it all depends. I, I tell people for now, you're not in that situation as of today where like I have that same option with real estate where I can take just this huge amount of equity and cash from it. Um, so that that's just one, one thing to keep in mind and to keep in mind that if you over leverage yourself, no different real estate people over themselves themselves in 2008 and, and in Canada was in 1989 and 1990, 1990, 1991 when interest rates went double digits. And so basically if you just keep your ratio low, you can, you can perpetually just keep on taking a lean against your crypto. Yeah. Um, I'm, 
I'm seeing it become a more obvious trend where it's where it's where it's so valuable that um, the loan to value rates are going to start to go up. I mean, yeah, there may be 50 percent right now. But as you start to see the value of Bitcoin and, and more mass adoption, like when it bridges the gap again from early adopter to mass adoption. Um, in my mind, in my mind, um, 500K Bitcoin is it's it's in our view. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, we're going to be up over 100,000 before the end of the year for sure, maybe even by the summertime. What do you think? Uh, yeah, it all depends. You know, there's, you know, as long as no black swan events happen per se, but if you're looking at previous past history and. Bro, this, it doesn't even this matter if there's a black swan event. You know, you bring a pandemic on and all they do is they fucking just like put a big fat band aid on it and it pretends to go away. It's, it's, it's just bonkers. But how we th there today. are dark sides. So I made a Twitter <laughs> post about there are dark side. Uh, people are. I'll say this. You're not too late for Bitcoin, but you're not too early. You are getting priced out through the Ken and Lenin effect. Michael Saylor, he creates he creates a receipt. I'm going to raise a billion dollars at almost 0% interest rates and take this cash and have a premium on this money. And I'm going to buy Bitcoin and front run retail. Okay? Richard and I can't do that. Well, maybe if we really try hard, we can. But per se, we're not going to do that. 99.99% .99 of people don't do that. This is no different than when the Fed prints money and gives it to Wall Street or gives it to their crony friends and they have a premium on the dollar. What that means with the Canadian effect is uh, they're sitting on trillions of dollars that have, hasn't entered into the liquidity pool of the economy. So I can then go out there and buy assets, um, not secretly, openly. I just buy the assets. But then once I buy the assets, once the money goes into the economy, into the liquidity pools, I then have, there's a premium, there's an inflation on the asset. And so I tell people, it's not too early, I'm sorry, it's not too late, but it's not too early, man. You're literally getting priced out on a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. Just buy it. Just don't ask like, oh, it's too expensive. Do you think it's going to crash? Is it going to go to zero? What about Peter Schiff? You know, he says gold is a thing. Just, just buy it. Just, I know the funniest know. is I made, I made a Twitter post about it last year or a year and a half ago. It's like, it's never, it's never going to reach 50K. Yeah. And then he's like, right. oh, oh. It's <laughs> the funniest thing, his son is hardcore Bitcoiner and trolls him. That's hilarious. I, I don't know. I just start using Twitter now to troll people. I just tell them to fuck off now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, all right bro appreciate it i got a, a bunch of good notes i hope you guys got something out of this i mean it shed some light on for uh me anyway so thanks for hopping on if you want to learn more about pleasure. bitcoin i did a uh, cast like the week before with brad who's a mutual friend of ours um so the so the prior episode of this i did with brad on bitcoin go watch that if you could you know if you want to learn some more about just you know specifically just bitcoin all right man thanks a lot